Thank you for joining me again on another Healing for the Nations Live. It's a real pleasure to be with you. Um, last time we began a maybe a new series called uh, God's Healing Word, and I want to get right into that um, as we look into um, you know helping you to receive uh, God's healing power. Uh, so that you can receive healing from any sick, sickness or, or, reflic- or affliction that may be affecting your body right now. And so we said this, that God's, um, the way God heals today, he heals through his word. And um, this is how we're, we're, gonna, we're helping you. God shows us how to help you to receive your healing. And so we started with Psalms 107 verse 20. I um, just want to review a couple of things. I know there's some new people um, joining us in, in this part of the program. And because this program goes all over the world, we don't want people to miss out who are joining us for the very first time. Um, wherever you might be joining us, whether it's in China, um, um, the, the UK, Europe, Africa, African continent, I should say, or, or here in North America, uh, uh, Central America or South America, wherever you're hearing this, again, we really appreciate you tuning in to hearing the word of God. I'm telling you, God's word today is going to bless your life. It's going to help you. And so um, our title today, uh, the, our message today is uh, God's healing word. This is part two, but I'm reviewing some things we shared from last time. And so we said this, there are some specific things God wants you to know in order to receive your healing. And so we said this, God heals by his word. He heals with or by his word today. And so Psalms 107 verse 20, a real good verse you need to know. It says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would thank the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. See, so he God sent his word. And we said last time, so God's word is the vehicle, the transmitter of his healing power, of his delivering power. And so that's a key thing there. God sent his word and healed them. Let me say it again. So right here, God is saying, Psalms 107 verse 20, the word of God is the vehicle by and through which God transmits and ministers his healing power to people. God heals by his word. Then we looked at uh, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, what's beautiful here, so so God in in, um, this book, the book of John, the gospel of John, he says, the word was with God and the word was God. So that's where we use the phrase, you'll hear me say a lot, God and his word are one. We could say God is indistinguishable from his word. You can't separate God from his word. You see that? So if you were to, um, you know, cut the word in two, that what you'd see God. God and his word are one. Because it says, and the word was, was God. It didn't say the word was like God. It says the word was God. So God and his word were, is, is one. The substance of God's word is God himself. And then it says, in him. Well, who's the him there? The him is God. The him is his word. Remember, God and his word are one. And so in him, so in, in the word, and the word is God, is life. And the life was the light of men. I hope you get that today. And that word became flesh. So that word, God's intention, is that the word, which is God, which possesses, which is made of of the life of God, that word to come on the inside of us and to transform our lives. See, that's the objective. That's the operation, we could say. That's the agenda of God. It's God's word in every area of our lives transforming us. So the beautiful thing about this is no matter where you come from, no matter what your background, 
No matter what your challenge is before you were born again, once you come into the family of God through faith, through the new birth, in and through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, you have heavenly potential. You have supernatural potential. Your life can be transformed by the power of God's word. And so we took some time to encourage you to really elevate God's word. Give it the highest place in your life. Don't allow anybody or anything or any situation to cause you to diminish or devalue God's word. Give it the highest estimation, the highest place, the highest value in your life. Put God's word first and see that word transform your life. And so we also said in um, Hebrews chapter one, verse one to two, we looked at that and it says here again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So he says right here, in the la these last days, how does God speak to us? By his son. Can you see that? This is why we elevate Jesus. This is why we, we compare him to no one else. And so because now he speaks to us by his son, well, who is the son of God? The son of God was the one who was made flesh, was the word made flesh. But what is the word? The word is, was God, is God. What's in the word? The life of God. Powerful. And then I asked you to turn to um, um, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. And here now, the writer, a powerful, really um, commands that he's giving us as believers of the word of God. It says, my son, of course, my daughter too, give attention to my words. Now, God is speaking this to someone very clearly, speaking to all of us. But I just send someone out there, this, you're taking this to heart. You've got to take this to heart. You, you, this, you're seeing this, that this is the answer you've been waiting for. So he says here, my son, give attention to my words. Notice he says, my words, God's word. Now, if he says my words, doesn't it mean to exclude everybody else? So there is an attention we are to give God's word, which is much higher than any other per person, any other person's opinion. It is God's word that we're, that we're holding fast. He says, pay attention, give your attention. You know what he said? To give your attention means, implies that you are moving your attention away from something else or someone else or some things else. So it says, give attention to, to my words. Again, move yourself away from something else or someone else that previously had the attention you should have given to God. And now will you pay attention? Say, so go from there. So with God, I'm pay attention to my words. So very strong, very emphatic, very, I mean, just an insistent, a command here. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. You see the command? Now, listen, this is not a suggestion. This is not a recommendation. You see that? He's, this is very strong a strong command, a directive to every single one of us as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from whatever you're looking at. Some of you right now, see, to listen to this message, to receive it the way, you have to shut something off. You have to get away from your phone. You have to turn the television program off. And what? Pay attention. You got to focus. God's saying, pay attention to me. If you do, it will be, a, will be the difference between life and death. Living a life of sickness and disease to walk in in healing and health. So he says, pay attention. Give your attention to my words. Talking about God's healing word here. Talking about helping you to receive God's healing power regardless of what you may be facing today. So you got to pay attention to my words, God says. Incline your ears to my sayings. Again, move your ears, move your eyes away from what somebody else has been telling you. Focus on what God has said and only what he said. 
It says, don't let them, what's them? Don't let my words, my sayings, what I've said, depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they, what's they again? God's words are life. Remember, you see, in the word was life. That's why we connect into this scripture. For they are life to those who find them. See, we're to find. So we're going to look now at certain, certain scriptures. We're, we're finding what God says. Because in that word is life. How does God heal today? He heals by his word. So he says, for they, verse 22, they are life to those who find them. And healing, that word health means medicine. Healing, health to all your flesh, to every part of your body that could be afflicted. I just love that. To all their flesh. So God's word, praise God today, it's intended as you hear it today. I tell you, the life of God is going forth as we share the word of God. That life is moving in your body and it will, it will affect a complete healing and a cure in your body because God's word has life. And it says, keep your heart, I like this, see, with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So your heart there is your spirit. So you've got to put God's word on the inside of us. We've got to believe what God says. Now, in fact, as I just read that, I reminded of the scripture, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Man shall not live by bread only but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Isn't that similar to what the, um, the, the writer here of Proverbs is saying? We've got to, so we live, we pay attention to God's word, we're inclining it. In other words, we're making that. That's our top, that's the, um, we could say, our, our top diet. It is our main diet. We could put it another way. Just like our most human beings have maybe um, uh, two or three, uh, healthy meals per day and you know like what like one person said you know people have you know three warm meals a day and they barely have one cold snack to feed their spirits a week so compare that three healthy meals for your physical body and a cold barely barely a snack half a snack for your spirit can you see then you see you can have a healthy spiritual existence on that kind of spiritual diet so that's why he says here, we've got to pay attention to God's word. We've got to incline our ear to his saints. Don't let them, that's his words, depart from our eyes. Keep them in the midst of our heart, for they are life, life. See, God's word has life. God's word is God himself, see? And health and healing to all our flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, vigilance. Like we've got to, so we've got to pay attention. Out of it springs the issues of life. Now I think about this then, there's the principle then of what you sow into your spirit. You've got to be sowing the right things inside of you in order to experience the God life that, God, that you were born again to experience. So you put in the God life, which is, remember, in the word, the word is God. In, the, in, God, in God is life. So God and life are in the word. And he's saying we've got to pay attention to his words. They're life to us who find them, health, healing, medicine, to all our flesh. So now let's look at a few of these things then. So um, in this matter of healing, we're going to look at a, uh, some of these foundational scriptures we need to believe God and believe and hear and receive and, and keep saying. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. I'm going to give you some time to turn to it because it's really important. So some of our first statements on this matter, because he says, they, so God's words, are life to those who find them. So God's word has life. To get that life into a particular area of our lives, we have to find the area of God's word that we desire to see his life minister to. So again, they, that's his words, Verse, uh, Proverbs 4.22, God's words are life to those who find them. So we're going to find some healing words today. So again, today, let me say this then. Um, today, God heals by the finished work of the Son of the living God, which is revealed in his word. 
So the, the, um, the revelation of the written word of God reveals what the Son of God has accomplished on our behalf and what he has made available to us. Now I wrote that down, the Lord showed that to me a couple of years ago, and I'm going to repeat it again. It says, today God heals by the finished work of the Son of God, the living word. And I'm repeating myself because we've quoted certain scriptures already that say that. Listen, so the revelation of the written word reveals what the Son of God has fully accomplished on our behalf and what he has made available to us. I hope you hear that. See, what he has already, is already made it available to us. I'm going to say it one more time. Today, God heals by the finished work of the Son of God, who is the living word. The revelation of the written word reveals what the Son of God, hear this, has fully accomplished on our behalf and what he has made available to us. Notice what he has made available to us. Now, so remember, through the sin penalty, he paid for us that satisfied the eternal courts of justice. Because of that now, God has made, provided righteousness to our account. When we name Jesus and, and receive what he's done, we say, Jesus, I receive you as the Lord of my life. When we believe God's word with our heart, say it with our mouth, confession with our mouth, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, what happens now? We, we receive the righteousness of God. We step into a place now where we can now receive all that God has made available for us in Christ Jesus. So the New Testament way of receiving healing today is receiving the good news, hear me now, of what God our Father did for us in Christ Jesus. I can repeat it myself. In his substitutionary work at Calvary, and we must meditate this word, this truth, this revelation, until it becomes an inseparable part of our being. Very powerful. So now, they are life to those who find them. So we're going to look at Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, because that these verses, probably more than any others, there's a few that, that are close, but this really, uh, you know, zeroes in, locks in on what Jesus Christ did for us and secured for us at Calvary. So Isaiah 53 verse 4 says, surely, I love that word. Every time I read it, I, I smile. I mean, surely mean definitively, definitely. I mean, absolutely, certainly, surely. He has borne our griefs. And the word griefs here, this says it um, um, from the Amplified, I believe I'm, I'm reading this. The word griefs is sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses. Very powerful. That actual word griefs there. So the original Hebrew actually means sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and our iniquities, the chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him, and with the stripes that wounded him, we are made whole. Oh, look at that. Now, you know I'm going to read that again, because, see, this, this really captures the substitutionary work at Calvary that Christ did for us. Really says what he did, why he did it, what was the um, substitution, what we got in exchange for him taking our place at the cross. I'm going to go back again. Proverbs 4 says that they, these words, they, these words have life. They are life. 
God's words are life. I could say it this way. I don't think I've said it like this one. So God's words are synonymous with the life of God. So God's word means we've got his life. His life to those who find them. So when we, we're, we're finding his healing words, we're taking these words to heart. We're, and then when we say we're, we're believing that God meant what he said when he said it, because he never lies. He doesn't mess around. He doesn't just speak words as fillers. He says what he means, and he means what he says, and he says, surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, distresses. That's what the word griefs mean. Sicknesses, weaknesses, distresses. He bore them. It's Jesus now. He bore them. He carried our sorrows and pains, punishment, yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. In other words, you know, those, they, they thought, well, he, you know, he was bearing that for himself. No, but he was wounded for our transgressions. See the substitution? He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him, and with the stripes that wounded him, praise God, we are healed. We are healed and made whole. Now look at that. So now, in this exchange now, because of what Jesus did for us, remember we're talking about we are their life to those who find them. We're, we're taking a hold of God's healing word today. Or at least beginning to. But we're taking a hold of it. Praise God. He says now, the, is, is, he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our guilt and iniquities, the chastisement needed for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes or with his stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. We are healed and made whole. So does not mean God sees you and I because of what Jesus did. He says we are healed. So healing is present tense. Another one of my messages we talk about is in the past we said healing belongs to you now. So by his stripes, we are healed. That's present tense. That means healing is yours right now. By his stripes, we are healed and made whole. They are life to those who find them. We're finding the life of God. We're f and that life is in his word. In the word is God. In that word is life. God's word e is equal the same as receiving his life. So we're believing on purpose. God, this is what you said about me. The stripe by the stripe, by with his stripes, we are healed. Because of what Jesus did, we are healed. Can you see what he says? Now, once we find it, we've got to, we've got to pay attention to what he says. We've got to incline our ears to it. We've got to not, not, not to move away from it. We've got to have a fixed focus, a fixed attention on what God has said concerning this subject of our lives. He cares about our health. He wants us to live a long, a healthy, satisfied life. And so he said, keep this word in front of you. Don't move away from it. Don't let it depart from your eyes. Keep it in the middle, the center of your heart. Can you see? Focus. It's like a bullseye. You know, when they're playing darts, they have the, bull, they have the bullseye and they're going for the bullseye. And he's looking, the dart player is looking at the center. He wants to get it right in the center. That's where you want. Now, God's saying, get left, let our focus be only on God's word. What do we find here today? We're finding God's healing word. And we're beginning right here. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely, again, definitely, certainly, you can count on it. He has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our distresses. He has carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken smitten and afflicted by God as if with leprosy, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and our iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and we are made whole. Now see, God wants you and I, we've got to believe that. We must take that to heart. That is the truth. Can you see why I say now you've got to pay attention to this? Don't move your focus, your gaze away to something else. Focus on this. This healing word is life to us.
because we found it. It says it's health medicine to our flesh. This word, that's what it will produce in us as we focus on it, as we believe it, as we take it to heart, as we don't veer away from it. I'm going to read it one more time. Surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, distresses. He carried our sorrows, our pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, and this is what God sees us now, we are healed and made whole. Now, this is what God is saying. This, so it says, this is God's word. As far as God's concerned, well, now we're saying it right here. I'm not making it up. This is what he said. We're not adding or taking away. He said, by the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. That means now you have a right to say concerning yourself, I am healed. I am made whole. Now, wouldn't that mean if we're, God is saying paying attention to what he said, that regardless of what you're feeling, regardless of what anybody else is thinking or saying about your situation, God wants you to agree with him. God wants you to say about yourself what he says. And he said, because of what Jesus did by his stripes, we are healed. We are made whole. Wouldn't I be right be saying to say about myself today, thank God, in the name of Jesus, because of what Jesus did for me, I am healed. I am made whole. I'm healthy and strong in the name of Jesus. Why? Because of what he did. Jesus bore my sicknesses. I'm just quoting what the word says. Just say what he says. See, that we'll only do that, though, to the extent to which we focus on what God says. So what am I saying about myself? What are you saying about yourself? You've got to say what God says. We're just doing what the word says here. Thank you, Lord. You bore, Jesus bore my griefs. He bore my sicknesses. He bore my diseases. He bore my weaknesses. He carried my pains, my afflictions. He took it all. And by the wounds, the stripes that wounded him, I am healed. I am made whole. I am whole. I am healthy. I am healed today. I am strong. I am blessed. Another scripture in Isaiah says, let the weak say I am what? Strong of our Psalms. Let the weak say I'm strong. See, what God has done, now think about this, it. not make believe. It's not mind over matter. It's God saying, listen, I did this for you on the cross of Calvary. Will you agree with me? Or better yet, will you receive what I provided for you? And how do you receive it? Receive his word. Receive what he said and talk about yourself the way God talks about you. Can you see, again, I'm going to go back to Proverbs. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Now, see, why would he be emphasizing that the, or using this kind of language? Because it's easy to be distracted. It's easy to walk by sight. It's easy to be, to be moved off and look at our circumstances. What we're saying here, you know, we've found life because we found God's word. And we're going to hold fast to what God said about ourselves. Surely he bore my griefs, my sicknesses, my weaknesses, my infirmities, my distresses. He, took my, he carried my sorrow, sorrows and my pains with the stripes that wounded him. I am healed. See, I'm personalizing it because he says, but with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. We are healed and made whole. I'm going to pray for a simple prayer today for you as we receive what God's already done for us. Praise be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your living word. In fact, just say this after me. Father in heaven, I thank you for your word today. I've found your healing word. I believe Jesus is the son of the living God. I believe that he bore my griefs, my sicknesses, my weaknesses, my distresses. I believe that he carried my sorrows, my pains, my punishment. He took it. He did it. I believe that we, with the stripes that wounded Jesus, my Lord, on the cross, I am healed. I am made whole. I thank you for the life of God now that is in my body, affecting a complete healing and a cure. 
And I give you praise today because of your good word. You never lie. You're always true. Praise God. And I hold fast to your word. And I thank you that for, for your healing promise, your healing provision, the inheritance of healing that belongs to me now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, that's wonderful. I tell you, the presence of God is right there where you are. You know why? Because in the word is life. In the word is God himself. As you honor God's word, you honor God himself and he's promised to be with you. Praise God. Well, again, let us know what God is doing through your life. I trust the revelation of God's word as we communicate it, as we teach and preach the word of God to you. I believe it's working wonders in your life right now. Begin to thank the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful mercy and for the power of his word that has been released in your life. Send us your healing testimonies. Praise God. Because I tell you, I know that as the word goes forth, the power of God is being ministered with it. Praise God. So let us know what God is doing in your life so we can join you in, in thanking the Lord for his goodness. Again, check out our website, foundationforlife.ca. Send us your testimonials. If you want to give us a call, 416-614-1220. Again, check out our YouTube channel. Like, share our messages on our YouTube channel. And please hit the notification so you can be notified of our upcoming messages. Well, thank you for joining us again on another Healing for the Nation's Live. We love you. We thank God for you. So until next time, God's richest and best be to you and your family. I'm Pastor Carl Lewis of Foundation for Life Family Church in Toronto, where we are building lives and families on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ, teaching families, training leaders, and transforming communities. Join us this Sunday at 11 a.m. for our Sunday services at 2950 Keel Street in Toronto. I look forward to seeing you.